Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here, and it is block number three of The Secret Lives of Color. So we're doing that with the book. Well, we're not actually, the book doesn't have any of these blocks or anything. It's just the stories. And so for each story, each color, we're doing one block. And today I'm doing one of the three inch blocks. So here it is. Look how cute. So sweet. Tiny, tiny, tiny. I have a little word text. Our color today is silver. So the shoe fly part for all of my blocks is the color of the day. And then right now I'm playing around with pastels as all the backgrounds. So I'll talk to you a bit more of that in a second. But silver, the story takes us everywhere from how silver might have, you know, the, the legend of how silver was found. <laughs> coming up from the ground and off into space, uh, why our silverware might be the way it is, and the conquistadors. So silver has a uh, strong history and woven through our lives quite a bit. So it's, it's super fascinating. I love this chapter. Of course, I'm gonna say that probably about most of the chapters. <laughs> I think they're just fabulous. Now, I did have the silver fabric picked out, and then I wanted to do an aqua and I thought about doing the darker one or the lighter one. I thought, you know, I'm gonna to try to keep everything more light. So the whole quilt will have dark spots once we get to dark colors, um, but I think all the backgrounds are going to be light. I might change my mind. We have an entire year. We have 75 blocks we're gonna make. So right now, that's where I'm going. I have the first two blocks and then block number three, and then there will be a three and a half inch uh, square next to that to make one unit for the layout that has all three sizes as you go through the 75 blocks. So there's this guy. So happy about it. All right, got a couple of other things. Let me put that over there. Because today I want to go through a couple points and then into my tops. I'm gonna to drag them all up here and take a look at them. So first on the Woodland Wonderland, uh, there was a few people who asked me <clears throat> about the directions for this, the sashing bit here. You know, that part between the baby shoe flies. It made sense to me. So I didn't even think about talking about it on Friday, but I did go and update the website with what I'm gonna tell you. Um, the, the mathematically, if she gave the size that she gave you for making this little sashing piece will make this strip too long. So too long to fit on there. So what she has you do, the designer, Joanna Figueroa, has you do is trim a little bit off of these um, so that you know you ease it in, basically, you make it work. She could have just given you two sizes of blocks or could have asked you to do what I'm gonna tell you, uh, which is for six of the blocks, yeah, uh, six of the blocks, trim an eighth. You need to get rid of it three-fourths of an inch uh, from the total. And then two of the blocks you won't trim. And then you just mix them up and that eighth of an inch is not gonna even be noticed. So that is how I approached it. I hope that helps. Um, or you could just trim a little slivers, how, how she says in the book. Okay, the other thing is, is I counted, where's my sheet? I went and counted all of my quilts that need binding. So I'm not gonna drag those up here, although I have two that I need to pull out of the basket because I don't remember the name of them. But I have, I started my document, and for those that need binding, I have 15. So I need to take uh, the two out and decide, I know a couple of these are gonna be charity for sure. And I may not even bind them. I might just give the binding to the group and let them do the binding. <clears throat> There's no reason I have to do it. So I'm really happy to have those documented. That, uh, it's good, it's good. I brought one up here, because this is the first one I'm gonna do, which is the Liberty. So I'm gonna show you this one <clears throat> to see where the, Ta da do you remember this one? I'm on the back side of the table, so I'll hold it up. There's the Liberty. This was a, um, a sampler box, a special sampler box. It had a whole bunch of other goodies in it besides the fabric, just for the middle. And then what I did was went through the, my scraps to do this big border around it. And I've showed you that a few times, so 
pop a pic. Here's a picture of the whole thing so that you could just see the whole thing done up. Oh, I forgot to mention my top. I've got this cute top. I know a few of you have seen it. It's from Kohl's and in the description box below, I link you over to it. They also did this with the, the patchwork on green, like an olive green, which looked cute. But look, it's got a little hood. It's warm and toasty and the sun is out. We had snow. We had another four inches of snow last night, which will probably melt over the next couple of days once it gets warm again. Uh, but it's uh, the sun is out. So this is feeling very toasty. It does not have pockets. They could have improved on that. No pockets, but it does have a nice little vent here, which I think it makes it hang a lot nicer. <laughs> so there, there is my top, which is like, yes, you totally have to have a top like this, right? A lot of people are making jackets from quilts, um, which is a little different than I did back in the day when I made tons of jackets that were quilted. But I made the, f I made the patchwork specifically for the jacket. People right now are cutting up old quilts that they've, you know, or tops, you know, and turning them into jackets. So that's kind of fun. But I'm not doing that. <laughs> not today, anyways. So I wanted to do a mail call. Uh, Julie in Wisconsin, she sent me some adorable cards. She and a beautiful long letter about thank you, Julie, so much, all about her town uh, and different parts of her town that are fun. And she sent me a bunch of different cards uh, and local chocolates. <gasps> look at this. Okay, I have to show you the inside. Yum. Look, look, look. There's the, the milk chocolate ones, which says it's toffee and meltaways. And then here are the white chocolate, which is bark and toffees. At least look at them. Bark, this this is bark. That's why I call bark. It has almonds and the milk. That these are about my most favorite thing. <gasps> In white chocolate. Yum. Julie, thank you. Mwah. Okay. Word of the year. I'm living my word of the year. Today is a day to for me to, you know, we kind of already did the word of the year for the beginning of the month. I don't know why I have it again on the calendar, but because it's there, I will mention it. I am living the word space right now because I am doing this documenting of my UFOs. I have got a whole shelf offloaded and put in the quilts all put in my living room right now, sorted so I can go through them. And I'll be showing you those over January. Big group of them will go off for that my friend who works with several charities and then she can organize whether they best, you know, which kind of charity best will get the quilts. Uh, yes, yes. So I'm living the word space this month. Space is to create space, create a bit of space on my shelves, a bit of space in my environment. Uh, that is the aspect of space that I'm focusing on. So if you have a word today, a word of the, of the year, today reflect a little bit on it. See, you know, it's only, you know, a few days into the month, into the year, but see that you, you know, just connect with your word today. The other thing that I have not talked about are the scrap management, <clears throat> and I'm going to leave that for another day. Maybe next week one day I'll talk about scrap management. It's going to take me a little bit of thinking through and getting all the stuff out to be able to show you kind of what I produced and think about what I'm going to do with all that. So I, um, I probably will devote like a whole, um, you know, episode here to that. What I did in 2021 with the scraps I produced while I was making things, you know, stuff like this <laughs> from the Woodland Wonderland. That's like, yes, this. All right, now let's take a look at my laundry basket. It's called a French laundry basket of quilt tops. I want to go ahead and show you this laundry basket before I pull everything out. This basically lives in my living room because there's space there to put it. So here it is. These are sort of wire, um, I don't know, they're called like French laundry baskets. Here's the edge of it. And then I made this liner for it. So it just comes with this metal. You can probably buy liners, but I made a pretty liner for it. So in here are only quilt tops. There should be nothing else. It'll be a surprise if there is, but there should be absolutely nothing else in here but quilt top. So I'm going to go now and offload all these onto the table. They're all out of that basket. Here they are on the table. Doesn't look too bad, does it? There are 23 here. 
23 plus I have maybe five tops that are at Cindy's. So Dennis, um, you know, Cindy passed away and she was my best friend and my long armor and helped us with the Facebook group. Um, so Dennis is, you know, at working through things. And at some point I will ask him to just box up what he has there, which is about five quilt tops. And they, they had no deadlines. And so basically she would do them in between other things. And they were actually, some of them have been there a while because it just wasn't important to get them quilted. <laughs> so, ah, yes, I will have to get those. So, you know, maybe about 28 tops, something like that, but 23 here. And I wanted to show you a couple of them. And then at some point I will show you other ones and other ones you've seen because they've just re like, like the spools. I'll just show you, this is what we did. What did we do this? The spools in 2020. Uh, I think it's when we did that one. And like my socialites, you know, we sewed that one together. A lot of these were sewn together, but I want to show you first. I have two that are very, very old. <clears throat> and I believe if you've been watching my channel a long time, you might recognize the first one, which is smaller. So I'll hold that one up first. Um, this is one that I designed back before I learned how to applique. And I got sort of stuck. It was a sort of a memory quilt. It was something I guess that we were doing with the guild. And my Nana, which was my grandma, my mom's mom, and Nana worked for Bell Telephone Company as a telephone operator. Uh, you know, like pushing everybody's connections together. And then she also, at the end, towards the end of her career there, she was a trainer. So she would train other uh, new operators. You know, of course it was newer technology then. Uh, but my grandmothers both worked for full-time jobs. They were not stay-at-home grandmas. Uh, so here is what I did. It's my, my Nana, because she worked and talked so much during the day, uh, and she liked to talk, which might be where I get it from. <laughs> she, she, she would keep peppermints in her big black purse because she would put those, you know, suck on peppermints to soothe her throat from all the talking. So I designed this quilt, which has the purse, black purse at the bottom and all the peppermints. And I always thought I wanted to applique on the border uh, Nana's peppermints like make another border and make it big and bold Nana's peppermints and so at one point I wasn't doing any hand applique and people weren't really doing like piecing of letters and things back then I'm sure somebody was but they just were not that um, you know just weren't being done so there wasn't I had I didn't see that as an option so this has been in a bag for a, a really long time and so this one and probably the next one I'm going to show you, which is gigantic. The next one is gigantic. Uh, and I won't hold, you won't be able to see it all. Um, those, these are two of my oldest UFOs. They're, they're just, they're tops. So luckily they're tops <laughs> and I will be keeping both of them. This one are uh, hexagons, just like the hexagons I showed you yesterday from my in progress. These were bigger versions that I did years and years and years ago and i put i have a border on it and this is like a bed size you know quilt a border on that and then on the corners are vintage hexagon blocks that i purchase all four corners have a vintage block but it is it is a big baby big 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 and they're all squares so they're just you know put down on a square and i definitely want to uh, get that one quilted. It's bedside, so I'll use it on my bed. I think another fun one I'll show you here, which some one of our friends sent me this fabric, which I'm going to use for the back. This is also vintage blocks, and I bought the background piece when I was hanging out in New York City with my buddy Victoria Finley Wolf. We went shopping in the garment district and I bought this silvery linen. So did she, we both bought that. And I hand applique down all these vintage blocks. The Dresdens didn't have a middle. So I put those, the polka dot on it. So that is, this is another quilt that I just love and want to keep and have that one quilted. Then the rest of these, I have a few that were samples that I used when I was teaching. And when I was teaching, you know, even though we did drive, it was still quilt, full, fully quilted quilts took up a lot of room. So occasionally I would have just a top that went with the, the, 
across, you know, like additional colorways. So here was, I'll show you one of this. This is a red one. So of course I'm going to have to keep that, right? <laughs> I can only keep so many quilts. Uh, so this is a project um, class that was a medallion, making a medallion, working with sort of your colors and making things a little bit more exuberant. So here is that quilt. I'll hold it up. And I actually have another version of it, so I'll show you that because it's kind of fun to see. I know you can't see the whole thing. Sorry, sorry. Here's one. Done. Now these are older. If I can find the, if the book is still around, I'll link you to this book. It was one, of, it's out of print, but you might be able to find some on uh, Amazon in the reseller market. So here's this one, same quilt. It's a medallion quilt. This one I have a little rickrack in it. Can you see that? Where is it? Oh, it's down here. See the rickrack? I put that in there. So the rest of these 23 are mostly sew-alongs, things that I um, did. Oh, here's one, another one, which is a free pattern on my website. This applique hearts. And every row of hearts I did with a different applique technique. And so when I was teaching hand applique, I would take this around for my classes so people could see. And once again, it was just kept as a top because it was easier to transport it um, that way. So I would like to get that one quilted. <laughs> so I know, see, I've just now decided, okay, so I have a small group here. I know I'm going to get quilted. And like we did, um, we did this guy, which was so fun. This was from the charity two years ago, I think. Uh, it was a bonus quilt that came out with it. So, okay. There, I have done it. I have showed you everything. <laughs> All right, my friend. I have a new thing too, I'm gonna start. It's called the advice column. <laughs> in, in, in the Sloan zone here, it's the advice column. So uh, often you guys are talking about things or uh, on the group, on the community page, a topic comes up. And I thought there's sometimes I just like to chime in on a, on a bigger level than just leaving a comment under that post, which most people will never see. So one of the things that I've seen recently, I think mostly because it's the beginning of the year, there's people who would say, well, I can't do my quilting until I finished all my chores. That's the basis of the sentence. You might hear it said in several different variations, but the basics is I need to finish my chores until, uh, and then I can uh, quilt. Well, one of the things is chores never finish. They never do. They're just ongoing. They go and go and go. It's like going to work. When you go to work, then you stop work and you have home time. Home time means part of that should be something fun, something fulfilling, something you do for yourself. If you're retired, if you're a person who maybe, you know, has, is at home, um, your job now is whatever those chores are. You don't do those 24 hours a day. You need to stop full days and not be doing chores and be doing, you know, things that fill you up, the things that make you feel creative, the things that make you happy. Because if all you do is ever work, 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 you're never happy. Uh, it, you know, your, your quilting is, should bring you joy. It should be something you look forward to and want to do. And it shouldn't be a reward. It, it should be just part of your life. It's as one lady told me years ago, she says, quilting is a lifestyle. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> okay, so that's my ad first advice column. You will hear more of them now and then when I see something that speaks to me to talk about. Okay, my friend, you are going to make your little shoe fly or whatever size you're making for the secret lives of color. So I love you. Mwah. See you online. <laughs>